tonight on Ghost Hunters International. The team heads to Slovakia to investigate the legendary spirits of a gothic compound. We just want to make communication. What was that? Is there anyone in there? There's something really crazy going on here. What will happen when Brian and Shannon encounter an unseen entity? It's moving. It just moved past me again. It's circling us. Okay, just just saw it flash right in front of me. This isn't friendly. Then, the team heads to Germany to investigate the headless ghost of Reichenstein Castle. What is that? Why is that show red like that? You got like, you got more than a little spike in you. Will the spirit rear his ugly head? Brian, there's like a white mist to keep walking through. Go, go. We got something. next investigation done. All right, here's what we got on board. We've got a place called Orava Castle. High on the rocks in the dense forest of northern Slovakia. Orava Castle was the location where Nosferatu, the classic vampire movie, was made in 1922. Wow. GHI is the first paranormal team to investigate here. Castle Orava is a national monument, and obviously the government of Slovakia is very sensitive about what goes on here. So when we were given the chance and rare opportunity to investigate here, we jumped at it. All right, so this looks incredible. Andy, Brian, and I will hop in, find out what's going on if you guys want to start getting unpacked. Mm -hmm. Okay, back it right. out, man. All right. Let's go. Sounds right. good. Hi. Hey, how are you? Fine. So I'm Peter, and welcome to Orava Castle. I'm excited to have this group of paranormal scientists here because they are first here. Me personally, I believe in something higher, so I really look forward to see what they will find. Dude, this place is amazing. What can you tell us about this? Place here, the old fortress were here for thousands of ages. The first mentioned Gothic castle is in 13th century, and it was built in the northern border of Hungarian monarchy to protect the business road here. Okay, so this is the youngest park here, built by Turzo family. Uh, the Uri Turzo's wife, Elizabeth, is known like a black lady here. Because when she died, they are saying that they saw her here and all over. Somebody saw it around the corner. While working on the night shift, the whole castle was dark, the electricity was out. Suddenly I saw in one window a small light, like a candle, walking growing stronger as it got closer to the window. I went to check it out. There was fresh paint on the floor in that room. But I saw no footprints or anything there. And how do they describe her when they see her? They describe her in black clothes. All right, well, we'll keep an eye out for her. Where are we off to next? We go next on the upper level. All right. We are now in the older part of the castle built from another family. This is a built in age of war against Turks and war between Protestants and Catholics. So it's a bloody age here in this region. Okay. In this area there was a lot of violence and blood. Uh, a lot of fire guns, a lot of torture. How we go higher and higher, the buildings are older and older. We go against the timeline here. This was built in 15th century, and one story is here, a little bit strange, that the king had in his prison the archbishop. And one story is saying that he's somewhere in the wall. He bricked him in? Yeah. So where to next? Next, we are going to see the white lady. Okay. This is the citadel, the highest point and the oldest part of the castle, and it's dated 13th century. And the story here is about the white lady. The owner was known as a really rough guy, and he got angry and cut his wife's arm. 
she died in two days. And then the story is saying that in his uh, death bed, when he was dying, he saw her, she came in white wedding clothes, and uh, she told him that she forgives him. All right, so what we're going to do at this point, we're going to get our equipment out and uh, seeing if we can't capture some of this activity. Okay, I'm looking forward to what we will find. Well, thank you for the tour. Pleasure. With the incredible violent and bloody history that this location has had, coupled with the fact that no other paranormal team has gotten in here to investigate yet, you know, I'm pretty excited that we might be able to find something. We set up four cameras in the black ladies' area. The first one's in the sword room. Then you go from this camera, you come around to the corner, and that's the dining room area. And then you got um, this room, which is the red room, where all the red drapes and everything. And then you got this room, which is the bare room. Okay, uh, that's it. All right, well, let's grab our equipment, get the lights out, and start investigating. Right, Sounds good. good. So we've got some kind of torture chamber here. We got stocks. Stocks. Feet would go in there, right? The hell's that? What is that? Uh, you know what? Pretty cool. It's the one pane of glass that's been knocked out. Look right here. Oh yeah, there you go. So with all the cold breeze coming through. It's coming right through there. Uh, it's colder, showing up colder. All right, nice. Let's keep going. Watch your step. You know what? The problem with this room, with all these display cases and the glass, the thermal's useless. It's reflecting off of all the glass. What was that? Did you just hear that? But you know what? The problem with this room, with all these display cases and the glass, the thermal's useless. It's reflecting off of all the glass. What was that? Did you just hear that? I could sound like someone trying that door handle. Andy and I were doing a thermal sweep when we heard what sounded like someone trying to open the heavy door handle next to us. We got a heat signature. The, there really shouldn't have been any heat signature in that keyhole. No one was touching it. To make that something like the sound we heard? That's what we just heard. There's nobody behind this door. Holy, we're up high. Well, there's only one way anybody could have gone. Let's do it. Shall we see what's on the other side of here? Oh, man, this place is immense. That's the end of the trail. This is as far as it goes. We followed the noise to an upstairs room, and that was a dead end. There's no other way up here. Large empty room with no other entrances whatsoever. So that leads us to believe there was no way anyone could have been on the other side of that door opening the door handle. That's, that's a pretty good mystery. Brian, Brian, in the Citadel, top floor. The very top of the castle. We don't mean any harm. We're not here to impose. Barry and I decided to start out at the topmost part of the castle, which is called the Citadel itself. We wanted to come up here and uh, see if we can catch the lady in white. Do you understand? Oh, ah, you son of <laughs> We had very little light source. We wanted to keep the light sources down to a minimum. Uh, so, you know, you hear a lot of banging, a lot of noises popping around. That's us actually hitting our shins on the little benches. Give us a sign that you're here. Move something. Touch either one of us. We got cold up here. Oh, it's got much colder up here. Mm -hmm. We don't wish to impose. We just wish to communicate. Somebody's standing there, I just saw a movement. Oh, dear God. They're just moving toward us like it's nothing. 
you are seeing these shadows, these five foot, five and a half foot shadows moving around on the sides of the citadel itself. Are you the person who was murdered by your husband? Yeah. We don't. You just got this in the back of the arm. Okay. Nice. We started to do our EVP work. Something came along and just squeezed the back of my arm. So if the white lady is in here, we're just trying to communicate with you. Andy and I decided to do a thermal sweep of the Citadel where the apparition of the white lady had been seen. Let's get to where Barry had his experience. So we know that everyone calls you the white lady. What's your name? We need you to come to us now. If you can show us you're here. Ow, oh, son of a Is the white lady here? What was that? Did you hear something downstairs? I, I just heard something downstairs. What's that? What's that? What's that? Is that a reflection? Go back. Go back right there. What is that? Hit, hit it with the... It's moving. Hit it with the laser. What was that? I don't see it. It's going now. We said, wait a second. What was that? We went back. As I got back to it, it went down and disappeared. Go back to this outlet? Yeah. No, dude. Nothing. That was right over here. It was, it was a definite heat spot right over there. Right. There's a big red one along the bottom of this wall. Yeah. Right there. There it is. Look at it. I, I can't make out what that is. Does it's that, like does some that kind look of... like footsteps? It starts on the wall, and then it drops down onto the actual floorboard there, and it moves and, forward. It almost looks like footsteps to me. And to me, it looks like some sort of odd energy. It moves down, moves off the wall, and dissipates. It's gone. Andy and I had something real interesting happen during our thermal sweep in the Citadel this evening. At the same time, it's kind of hard to tell what it is, so I'm pretty excited to get back and look at it on a bigger screen and see if we have something there. I want to get tugged down, I want to get pushed, I want to get a hand in my face. All right, just promise me that you're not going to leave me alone. Get used to the darkness. Never. I mean, never. This is your habitat now. You're a ghost hunter. The best thing to do in, the, in these situations is to relax your eyes. As a ghost hunter, you gotta learn that darkness is your friend. Just relax. I'm just trying to teach you a little bit that I've learned over my 16 years of paranormal investigating stuff that people won't teach you. Anybody here like to speak with us tonight? Hello. Yeah, I, I am the newbie. I am the newbie. I'm the, I'm the rookie on the team. I don't want to feel like the rookie on the team, so... I'm trying to do the best I can to pull my weight on these cases. You can come out. We ain't gonna bother you, we ain't gonna hurt you. It's getting dark. Yeah, it just, it, it got dark in here. I mean, it's darker than usual, it's blackness. I can tell you right now that I have no fear for you. I've dealt with too many of you people. Was that you just hit me? I am right here. You just hit me? I didn't touch you. Something just whacked my arm. Something just whacked my arm. All right, I have rosary bead. Hello. What, what? Something just moved behind you. Me and Shannon decided to walk up to the taxidermy room. I started doing EVP work. Got pitch black, and uh, things started happening. Tension is a little high. What are you saying? You saw a whole big shadow from walking out of that door. Something just moved behind us. All right, don't be playing your games now, all right? Don't piss them off. They ain't gonna do nothing. They can't hurt you, Shannon. Oh, they yeah. can't. It's impossible. They can touch me. Yeah, they can touch you, but they can't hurt you. That's one thing you gotta realize. These things can't hurt you. Ah. Son of a What's going on? Just got poked in the arm. Okay. Where are you? Just, just saw it flash right in front of me. Yeah, it's, it's playing games. It's moving. It just moved past me again. 
It just did it again. Don't even tell me there's more than one of it's, them. It's to my left. It's to my left. Okay. <laughs> there's more than one of them. But yeah, it's, this one's white. This one right here is not black. It's white. Oh, we cool. We good. We good. We good. We good. All right. Did you see that? Did you see that? Are you still with us in this room? We saw shadows in doorways. We saw shadows right in our faces. There were some lighter colored shadows, and they were actually shorter than me. And I saw some tall, dark shadows um, that were much taller than me. Well, that was cool. Donna and Barry in the taxidermy room. Barry, where are you? I'm here. This dark is so thick, I can't even... Wait, is that you? Yeah. Did you just touch me? No. Barry and I went up to the taxidermy, and I thought Barry grabbed the bottom of my jacket, like a tug. He's got his light up. Who's that? It was me, it me, taking her to the UV. What? It was me taking her to the UV. I took, it out of, like I took it out of its pouch. Something just went like this to my face. No, I've never done that, I think. I swear to God, it scared the friggin' <laughs> out of me. It, it, whatever it was, put its hand right up to my face like this, and it was a hand. Something's going on here. So, yeah, something big time. Why are you still here? Who are you? You put your hand up to my face, and I didn't like it one bit. Come forward and make yourself known. I, over there, will you point her the, 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 the door? Yeah. Yeah, did you see that? Yeah, I did. We kept seeing things in, in, in front of us. Barry! Did you see? I did. I see, I see you, that. You see that? It's in front of us. Let's, let's leave here for now. Okay. It's just completely unbelievable at this stage. It's crazy. This place is, this place is getting to be a little bit... It, it's coming alive. How many steps is it going to be? 1,462 steps. Barry and I are going to head back up to the Citadel. Piece of cake. This is nothing. Come on, you can do it. Did you ever read the story about the little train that could? Hi. Are you there? Our goal is to set up the EMF meter in almost like a web so that it's an audio alert. Where do you want these? In here or let's do Let's three. do doorway, bottom of the stairs. Right. Top of the stairs. That way, if something is roaming up there, it will alert us where they are. Okay. We're here looking for the white lady. Is she here? Can you please come forward and give us a sign that you're here? Are you upset that we're here? Barry? That was a spike. Was that you? Did you just make that happen? We are very sorry if we have made an intrusion. If you would prefer we would leave, please give us a sign. All right, we got a mountain of evidence to go through. Uh, let's get the lights up and get packed up. It was a long night. I look forward to see them again and to talk about what happened during the investigation. Well, we're about to go to review all the evidence for Revolver Castle. I had a lot of personal experiences there, so we're going to try to find those personal experiences on either audio or visual to validate all these personal experiences. Shannon, the question is being asked by Donna. Have a listen. Is there somebody here with us now? Kind of get here all the way over here. You know listen to this. I can hear it. I don't know what it's saying, though. I definitely, I'm definitely getting a very strong Slovak voice. That's pretty good, dude. That's very good. I'll continue on and, and uh, see what else we've got on this. All right, same here, brother. Listen to this. Um, Rob and Andy are in, in the museum, and Rob asked, do you want us to be in here? Mm -hmm. And listen to what it says. I would say that was Russian. Hey, 
Hey, guys. Hey, what's up? Hey. hey. What's going on? So, good investigation, but what about some good personal experiences? The taxidermy room? Barry was standing next to me, mm -hmm. and it was completely dark. And all of a sudden, I swear, I thought I saw his hand come right in front of my face. It was a hand right in my face. We had a, a bunch of experiences up there. Me and Shannon went up there. And it was a little gray thing, a little gray shadow running around us. And it poked me in the arm a couple times, tugged on my jacket, did this and that. Right. Andy and I had an experience in that room as well, where something very definitely tried the door handle, but we were standing in the same room everyone was in. Couldn't figure out what happened. All right, so how'd we do with the uh, thermal footage? So here, this is uh, you and Andy in the Citadel. OK, terrific. Right there. Boom. Yeah, so at this point, we saw it on the wall. We made sure that there was nothing there, no outlets, and the thing just kind of moves down and dissipates. Is that on the rail? No, it's on the wall itself. That's that's the catwalk that's the right cat there on the right left there. hand, and that's the wall right there, the stone, and there's the reflections of the bars. In fact, you can even see, if you look at that shot, it almost looks like you do have some horizontal and parallel lines that are running down that could possibly be yeah, that. Right, right. So are you saying that there is a reflection off the railing that transfers to the wall? Right, and the fact is that because of those bars, those horizontal bars, we know we're catching a reflection yeah. off that stone. Yeah. After carefully reviewing the thermal footage on the big screen, I have my doubts whether it's paranormal or just a reflection of us. Our saying goes, when in doubt, you have to throw it out. OK. Cool. But what about evidence? Do we have any audio? Uh, Barry's got a bunch of EVPs he wants to show you guys. This first EVP is taken with myself and Donna in the, the taxidermy room. You make a, a statement, and then there's a reply. Uh, following that, that the hand went against your face. Who's that? Sounded like, I know. Good catch. Oh my god. Wow. So so give me the background on this again. Why why did you say he's good? I heard him, you know, finish getting ready, whatever he need to get ready. And I said to myself, uh, he's good. He's set. He's set, mm -hmm. in other words. And then as soon as I said that, you get I get know. This, yeah. I know. Well, that's a great EVP, great catch. Anything else? Yep. The next EVP comes from the dining room with Donna and Shannon. So have a listen and see what you think. Is there somebody here with us now? Well, you obviously have a response, but I don't think I can make out what it is. Yeah. OK. Is there somebody here with us now? I mean, you can hear it plain as day, but I can't make out what it's saying. It's something that we can bring to Peter and see what he makes out of it, because you certainly have a response to the question. Yeah, yeah. So is that it for EVPs? No. We have one on, on the mini DV. No kidding, on yeah. mini DV? Yeah. This is uh, you and Andy in the Citadel uh, when you had the mini DV camera. You can obviously hear the response, but it didn't sound like English to me. Hey, Peter. Hey. Good to see you. you again? Peter, yeah. it's good to see you. Yeah. Well, you know what we do. We come in, we went on the tour with you, mm -hmm. you explain the stories of the activity that's been here. Now, what we do is we set out to debunk those stories. In other words, we set out to try and disprove them or come up with explanations of how they might have happened. Mm -hmm. And uh, we, we did get some very interesting evidence, I'd say. Right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. We had all kinds of experiences. Up in the middle part of the castle, Brian and Shannon, two of our investigators, saw two different shadows and images and forms moving around that area. Andy and I were in there um, just waiting to move into a separate area when we heard someone turn the door handle. And that's not an easy door handle to move. It wasn't the wind hitting the door. We verified it. We tried to figure out another way it could have happened. We went out that door. There was no one there. The door at the top, no one had gone up that way. Another interesting thing, uh, Donna experienced a, a hand that came right up in front of her face and almost aggressively pushed towards her face. And then on a different occasion, Shannon, our other investigator, experienced something very similar with something rushing right at her. So you want to say they were aggressive? Someone throwing what appeared to be a hand into your face is, is hard to take as a friendly gesture. This wasn't the end of personal experiences either. 
Up in the Citadel, after that long hike up there, we had a couple more things going on. First, Brian and Barry, they were seeing shadows moving over there. They were seeing lights move through the air back there. When Andy and I went up there, we had strange noises. We had chills go through both of us at the same time, even though we're unable to find where any draft would be coming through. But even though these experiences are impressive, our goal is to find hard evidence. Okay. This is what we call an EVP. We go in with our digital voice recorders. We ask questions of anything that could possibly be in the room with us. But when we go back and review the tape, sometimes there's voices that we didn't hear while we were recording. And at times, they have direct answers between us and them. Really? Yes. In this one, Donna and Barry were in the museum with the stuffed animals, the taxidermy. And Donna is commenting on the, the way that Barry is setting up the situation. What she's going to say is, he's good. Like, he's doing a good job. Now, I want you to listen immediately after the good ends to see if you can hear anything after that. Yes, I know. The response to me sounded like, I know. What's your take on that? That something was for sure going on there, and <laughs> it's hard to explain. Right. In the dining room, Donna and Shannon ask, is there anyone here with us? Now, what comes after that was a little confusing to us, but I think you may be able to shed some light on it. Is there somebody here with us now? Obviously, you hear this male voice, correct? Yeah. I think it's a name. He introduced himself. I think it's Don John. And does that name mean anything for this location? Yeah, it's a uh, knight, and he was the husband of the white lady. He cut it her hand. Well, that's an interesting response to the question, which is, is there someone here with us? I'm surprised. <laughs> because I didn't thought that you would record such a clear voice. Mm -hmm. Well, let me tell you, it's pretty exciting for us to get this kind of back and forth. And we do have one more piece of evidence that we didn't capture on a digital voice recorder. We captured on a mini DV, a handheld camera. My question is, do you want us here? Do you want us to stay here? Mm, maybe near. Mm. Yeah. Which means? No. So we got a, we had a pretty clear answer as to did she want us to stay there or not. So given all the activity we had up there, what, what is your take on it? What do you think? It's interesting that somebody was talking to you, yeah? But it's really interesting that the first noise was quite scary. <laughs> What do you think? Is this castle haunted? Are there ghosts here? What do you think? Is this castle haunted? Are there ghosts here? Well, given the, the number of personal experiences and the evidence that you heard, uh, we definitely feel that there is some sort of paranormal activity going on here. So how do you feel about that, Peter? Now, with this evidence, I know that some of the stories are true because when a lot of employees told the stories, uh, it was okay, you saw something. But now I believe in some of them. Even though some of the incidents appeared to be slightly aggressive, uh, many people did feel that they were just curious about our, our presence here. I don't feel that anyone's in any danger working here or having these type of things here. Okay. I'm really glad that you were here because now we have some evidence. Let me tell you this, as the first paranormal team to actively investigate here, this was an incredible opportunity to us, and we really want to thank you for having us here. It was a pleasure. All right. Dear, thank you. Pleasure. Here we go. To be honest, I'm really looking forward to see what will go on here in the future. And we came away with some good evidence, great personal experiences, and when you're the first team to go in there and look for this kind of activity, it's pretty exciting. And who knows, we might actually inspire other groups to follow in our footsteps and investigate it. Yeah. All right, well, on to the next one, huh? On to the next one.
All right, guys, so we're off to Germany. Donna's got the details, and uh, I'm going to pass you off to her. Sounds good. We are going to the Rheinstein Castle. It's located in Lorelei, Germany. It was built back in the 11th century, and it does have quite the interesting history that involves a headless ghost. How big is this place? The castle has about 30 rooms. All right, well, this certainly sounds like an interesting case, and we've had some good luck at castles so far, so let's check out Reichenstein Castle. All right. Nice, nice to meet, to meet you. you. I'm Andy. So you're the ghost hunters? We are indeed. Welcome here to Reichenstein Castle. Well, thank you. So what can you tell us about the history of the castle? Originally, it was a toll castle, like most of the castles here on the Rhine. That means they demanded tolls from the ships that went by, and they demanded more money than they should, and then they became robber barons. The last robber baron here on the castle was Dietrich of Hohenfels. When a shipment didn't want to pay, he chopped the head off. Uh, so he wasn't the nicest guy who ever stayed here. Uh, not at all. No. All right, well, if you wouldn't mind showing us around, that'd be terrific. Sure, then. Let's go in. Follow me. OK, so you probably notice we have a lot of antlers. I can see that. Yeah. Over 1,200 of them from every continent except Australia. So this is the ancestor gallery. Originally, this was the dining room of the Porricellis. You can still see their pictures here. And here, upper right corner, you see Valentin Porricelli. He has a hole in his chest. He got shot by his wife, his picture at least. And what kind of activity has happened in here? We had an old groundskeeper years ago. He used to tell here ghost stories. That there's a ghost tapping around here. So he heard like a tapping sound? Yeah, he was always afraid of this. So what do you think is going on? When you close up at night, <laughs> it's, it's kind of creepy. I don't like going in here very much. So this is August's bedroom. And what kind of paranormal activity happens here? People see shadows here and hear cracking noises. People feel bad vibes as well. All right, so where are we off to next? To the iron room. And you've had activity in here as well. Yeah, it was the headless ghost was seen in here. Who is the headless ghost? The robber baron I talked about earlier, it's Dietrich of Hohenfels. He came here, he made the castle so strong it couldn't be defied by medieval means. And the church then, the then owner of the castle, asked the little king of Germany for help. So he had to lay the castle under siege for four years before they surrendered because they had no more food left. Dietrich tried to get at least his sons free. He begged the king for help. And so in the end, they made a scary deal. All of his sons had to stand up in a row like you now. Then he got chopped his head off and he should walk by of his sons, each one he would pass, each one would live. He stumbled, but it is known that he made it. You mean Dietrich the robber baron actually walked past his sons after his head was cut off? Yes. So, so the robber baron has been seen in this room? All around the castle, especially at night. Well, thank you very much for the tour. At this You're point, welcome. we're going to get unpacked and get our equipment ready and get investigating. Okay. All right. See you later, then. All right, we'll see you Bye. soon. Thanks so much. I think the ghost of Dietrich is here and still haunting the castle, searching for his head. If they found the ghost, it would be really amazing, and I hope he could be sent to his, uh, to his grave and rest in peace. The castle's terrific. We have this headless apparition of the robber baron who is seen all over this place, and we have free reign. We can go anywhere we want. So at this point, I want to get the equipment set up and start investigating. So how do we do? Uh, I do all right. I got all four working. Yeah, that's the bedroom. Okay. The second one is the breakfast game room. Mm -hmm. uh, this is the electric pool room upstairs. And then this is the ancestor room. Looks great. Good job. Let's get to it then. Let's get the lights out and get going. Let's rock and roll. I decided to do a thermal sweep of the castle to see if we could find any temperature-based anomalies in any of the rooms. So this was obviously a game room. Yeah. What is that? Why does that show up red like that? Because it's shining reflecting off the glass in the cabinet. It's reflecting there. It's reflecting there. It's because we're closer and it's not a direct outside. Right. So it holds the heat more. Mm -hmm. After making our way through the castle interior, we headed up to the top of the castle. You know what, Andy? Some people say the only way to see the headless baron is to be right up there. I can do that. Here we go. As I fall to my death. Uh, 
I don't see any headless baron at all, though. All right, come on down, monkey boy. All right. We weren't able to capture any activity up there, so we headed back inside. All right, then back down and keep our eyes peeled. Yeah, absolutely. Watch your step. Yeah. Now keep in mind the things that are experienced in here, noises, shadows, just an overall heavy kind of negative feeling. We set the two meters up at either ends of the table and set them so that it's an audio alert. If something's walking, it will trip and alert us where they are. You understand the English that's coming out of my mouth? Donna went on the balcony with the camera. I had the handy cam. Give me a sign that you're here. Oh. What? We got a spike. Okay, I'll let it go down. Yeah. I just have to. The meter's getting more and more active, so. When we get a high EMF reading and there's no source that we can explain it from, at that point, some people believe that you're measuring spirit activity. Now, come on now. You got more than a little spike in you. If I gotta get nasty, I'll get nasty again. Give me a sign of your presence. Let us know that you're here. Did anyone hear that noise? Donna, Andy, myself went to go to the ancestor room. Andy was on mini DV. We had the digital audio recorder on the table, and Donna was upstairs taking pictures of the digital camera. Give me a sign of your presence. Let us know that you're here. Did anyone hear that noise? Now, if that was the noise you were supposed to hear, that's a little weak. I need something else. Brian, there's like a white mist you keep walking through. Oh, the mist is right in front of the stairs again, right in back of Andy. I, okay, I can feel. In back of you. Keep nah, snapping. No. It's, a, it's near that stairwell that goes up. I can feel it back there. Yeah. It, I, I actually felt it brush by my back. I'm not kidding you. Oh, oh, it's right on the back of your left shoulder. Come on. Holy Come on. Something just tapped me on the shoulder. That hasn't happened in a long time. That, I'll never say I've been touched. Tonight, it did feel like that. It felt like someone brushed up against me. I turned around. There was nothing stationary as far as furniture or anything like that that could have caused that. And that just brushed right by me. All right. Wow. This place is beautiful. I like this room. Oh my God, look at all the antiques. Shannon and I just went into Olga's bedroom, and Olga was one of the owner's wives back in the, the late 1800s. People have seen shadows in her bedroom, so Shannon and I decided to go in there and do some work. This is Donna and Shannon. If there's anyone else in this room present, I welcome you to join us and communicate with us, please. Olga, why don't you sit down on the bed right next to me? It's a pretty comfortable bed. I keep smelling this very light perfume, and I'm not sure if it's... Come on. Is that new? Or has it been constant? No, it's it's new. Why don't you um, take a whiff of the bed sheet you're sitting on? Maybe it's something there. This is... I can smell it right here. Can you? Can you see? But it's, I'm trying to figure out where it's coming from. I have no explanation for that. It's the first time I've ever smelled a scent before that I can't explain. Olga, is that your perfume that we're smelling? I'm not picking up any of that scent. It is getting late, so I think it's about time we pack it up. Tonight's investigation, there were a few personal experiences, and so obviously evidence review is, as always, going to be of supreme importance. And this was actually the first time that people came here with a scientific equipment to look for ghosts. And I hope they find a ghost tonight, because it would be really amazing if they found one. You know, I had a personal experience. I was hoping that there'd be some kind of hard evidence to back it up, something that would correlate with my experience, but it, it wasn't there.
Zandor. Hi there. See you again. Yeah. How are you doing, Zandor? Uh, how do you do? So, mm -hmm. you came in, looked for the headless ghost of the robber baron, mm -hmm. you know, looked to see if we could find anything in Olga's room with the stories that you shared with us. We come in and we say, okay, this is what's happening. Mm -hmm. How can we find a logical explanation for that? Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually were able to do that in a few cases. The room in which people had heard footsteps, noises, Olga's room, mm -hmm. what we notice is that the sound really carries in there. Mm -hmm. It doesn't have to be someone walking in the room above you. It can be a few rooms over and you hear that, that walking footstep effect right above you. Uh -huh. One thing that we noticed, the actual design of the castle mm. with the very ornate molding mm. throughout the rooms, mm. uh, the various antiques, mm. we found that when it's lit from the windows, mm. they do throw a lot of shadows. Mm. Now, keep in mind, we're not saying that this is what occurs in every case. And some of our investigators actually did have what we call personal experiences. Mm. One of them being uh, Donna and Shannon in Olga's room. They went up there and they reported back to us that they actually detected the smell of like a perfume. Mm -hmm. it's in this room, in the ancestor's room, at one point I felt like I was touched on the shoulder. Because personal experiences are great and they can lead us to something, but they're not evidence. You know, they make great stories, but they don't make hard evidence. So we went back and we went over all of the audio recordings, the video recordings, the pictures we had taken. We went through all of that piece by piece, trying to make sure that we absolutely did not miss anything. And at the end of the day, we actually were unable to find any evidence whatsoever here. Okay, so what is your professional conclusion now? There was personal experiences, but we weren't able to get any hard evidence of paranormal activity. Well, I have to say it's kind of surprised, but mm. it's actually kind of good. <laughs> well, what do you mean? Uh, from now on, I can tell everyone that it's not haunted, that it's safe to marry in here, for example. Mm -hmm. Well, this was a beautiful location. We had a great time investigating here, and we just want to thank you for having us. I was skeptical in, uh, at the beginning, but I really think you go from a scientific point of view, so it was a pleasure being with you here. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks so much. I feel really relieved about it because oftentimes I'm here alone in this castle and I will be feeling safe from now on as well. And I can tell everybody from the bottom of my heart that there are no ghosts living here. Well, that went really well. I think he's finding that comforting now to know that he's the only one walking around there at 2, 3 in the morning. I really wouldn't have thought that he would be afraid of... Yeah things that go bump in the night, but I guess he was. Yeah, yeah. all right, well on to the next one. Huh?